Hi, my name is David Kuvoga. I'm the operations manager for Pende Dog Conservation. Today, I'll talk to you about Pende Dogs, which uh, is a fascinating animal. Um, unfortunately, not many people know about it. There's less than 7,000 dogs left in the world, and uh, their situation has really been caused by a lot of uh, a lot of quality habitat, a lot of snares, road kills. And if we really don't do something about it, right now uh, these dogs can go extinct in our lifetime so i hope after uh, this presentation i will have many people that will uh, jump on the wagon and uh, will be together to protect these animals uh, we are located in southern africa um, zimbabwe to be specific and our work is mainly in wangi national park and we are also in manapus up there wangi is close to my heart this is where I grew up with my father working for national parks. Um, he did that for 42 years, has since now retired. Um, and this is where my formative years. Uh, I would be in Wanke then just seeing uh, blue vade beasts and hearing the roaring of lions outside of the house where I was. And this is where I got hooked up into conservation. And it has been my life and I know nothing else. At some point, we would be catching snakes and releasing them into the wild with my old man. Um, and uh, really, this is how I started to be introduced into human wildlife conflict, how to deal with wildlife that is in your space. And really, this stuck uh, to me and it became a passion that I continue with today. Pended dogs. Uh, Pended dogs have uh, this striking a court that you can see there. It will not be uh, difficult to really identify them if you have the opportunity to see them in the wild. Uh, Painted dogs have uh, the brown, uh, the black, and the white uh, color patterns that you see. But you have to realize when pups, when they're born, um, pups are black and they have uh, white tails and uh, the coating changes uh, as they grow. They're born in a den, of course, uh, to their uh, mom who is the alpha female. Uh, Pended dogs live in packs and uh, the alpha female really commands the pack. It determines where the dogs will go for a hunt, where the dogs will rest um, and uh, also maintain the discipline within the pack. Pended dogs uh, work together very well. They don't uh, work with aggression so that the pack is uh, together. They really uh, do it cooperatively. This is through uh, playing around. They do a lot of playing around. They do a lot of uh, uh, tails wagging. They do a lot of uh, sneezing. They do a lot of uh, running around and jumping around. All this is uh, in order to make sure that they are bonded together as a pack. They will need this when they go on hunts. They will need this when one of them is lost and they're trying to find the other and they're doing the who calling, et cetera, et cetera. So this social uh, network, this social system is critical to painted dogs. You see that they have these oval, oval shaped ears, which they use for hearing. They are better more at uh, their hearing than uh, their sense of, sm of smell. Um, painted dogs will also use their ears to cool themselves down. Um, you see when they go on hunts, Pende dogs will go for 50 kilometers per hour and make these runs until the prey is exhausted. Uh, and they really need those ears to make sure that they are kept cool. They have long legs, thin. They don't really carry a lot of weight on them when they are running. They are really streamlined for this kind of, uh, uh, they are adapted to this kind of hunt. When the queue is done, Pende dogs make sure that they are pups are fed first and they also uh, cut and chop and uh, eat uh, whole chunks of meat which they regurgitate back to the pups that could be at the den. They also would bring back uh, meat for the sick and the injured uh, members of the pack uh, to make sure that these pack members are healed uh, and they rejoin the pack because it's all about numbers uh, with dogs. An injured dog means they have less numbers and it's difficult for them to do the hands. So they make sure that they take off each other, which is critical. Uh, again, I think this kind of uh, uh, support for each other is something which uh, 
we as humans can take aboard. They are not wanton killers, as some would uh, uh, think. Uh, Panda dogs would hunt early mornings and evenings. Um, 80 to 85 percent of the time, they'll get what they need. Once they have eaten, they will lounge and lie down there, and the rest of the uh, animals will continue to uh, graze and do what they do uh, with no harm from panda dogs. But of course, panda, a hungry panda dog uh, is no friend to an impala or a water park, for that matter. They are not related to um, our domestic dogs. Uh, even if they are put together, they will not be able to mate and produce uh, pups. Um, of course, they have some mannerisms. As you can see there, they can scratch and uh, uh, they're playful, like we mentioned earlier, uh, but they're not uh, related at all. Um, panda dogs are not hyenas. Uh, many people I've met would come and say, ah, panda dogs, oh, you mean those hyenas? Uh, no. Uh, Panda dogs are panda dogs, and hyenas are hyenas. Hyenas uh, weigh more. Um, they're about skister kilograms, and panda dogs uh, about half of that, which is about 30 kilograms. Um, so you can see on the left, uh, that's uh, your panda dog with the collar. It's fitted with the GPS collar there, and your hyena is the one on the right. These guys are not friends, and when they meet, this happens. Um, when panda dogs meet a solitary hyena, uh, they would do their best to chase it off because hyenas are kleptoparasites. They will follow panda dogs so that when they make a kill, they chase them off the kill and eat their food. So panda dogs know that. When also hyenas are moving around, they see a solitary dog, they'll go after it. Many pups have been killed in dens uh, by hyenas and lions um, just as part of their natural uh, elimination of competition. So for those who didn't know, Panda dogs are not hyenas. So panda dogs were many at the 10th of, 10th of the century. We are talking about half a million of them, but now we are looking at less than 7,000. And there were laws that were passed in the past uh, in Zimbabwe, for example, in 1916, which allowed people to shoot on sites and kill dogs and be paid about five pounds. And this led to a lot of dogs being killed by mostly cattle rangers that saw this as a threat to their business. And fortunately enough, now there's a new law that is uh, protecting panda dogs in Zimbabwe passed in 2020. So something good has come out for the wildlife during this year. But of course, threats to panda dogs continue to exist, like snakes. Diseases such as rabies in Kenya in December. We have loss of quality habitat, which means a lot of road queues are on the increase because of the developments that are happening around the protected areas. That's why we have taken on board our communities, especially the children through our children's bush camp, so that we can teach them and conscientize them about the environment. We take them into the local Wangi National Park so that they can see wildlife in a different view you would understand that most of the time kids are faced with lions that are eating their cattle or elephants that are eating their crops. And uh, taking them into the bush camp makes them see wildlife in a different perspective. The person who has been at the helm of the children's bush camp and the education program is my colleague, Wuton Tsima, who is going to tell us more of what their plans have been since this year was not a normal year at all. My name is Wilton Nsimango. I'm the Education and Community Programs Manager with Painted Dog Conservation. We are here at the Children's Push Camp where we normally conduct our flagship free of charge four-day residential program which aims to not merely teach new concepts about the environment but to promote an emotional attachment to it that will lead to a lifelong attitude of caring for it. The program targets 23 local primary schools every year. But due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we only managed to conduct seven camps covering 253 kids earlier this year. Normally this time of the year, we will be having kids in camp playing ball behind me here. 
However, with your support, the challenges have turned into opportunities where we have designed an intensive outreach program which we intend to roll out into the schools as soon as schools reopen. Indeed, it would be fantastic to have these happy faces back at the children's push camp again. We have had over 13,000 kids coming through the push camp. And what more can show the impact of the children's push camp other than Belinda, the girl in the middle, who came at grade six at 11 years old and is now working for anti poaching unit. And our anti poaching unit has been on the ground since March, making sure that we keep boots on the ground and indeed, through your support, we have managed to do so. We will hear now from a colleague of mine, Enoch Zulu, who heads our anti poaching unit and has been doing that for 10 years with us. Since the coronavirus pandemic, we have seen a serious increase in poaching activities. During the lockdown period, spanning from April to end of June 2020, we have collected 1,186 snares compared to 471 snares collected during the same period in 2019. Despite the lockdown, we haven't stopped our patrols. Thanks to your support, not only have we maintained our patrols, but we have also increased our effort by engaging the local community volunteers. As you can see, some of them behind me, to cover as much ground as possible. Normally, we do an average of 70 patrols per month. Now, with the addition of the community volunteers, we are conducting more than 100 patrols per month, and we are looking forward to complete over 1,000 patrols by end of year. Please keep supporting us. Indeed, let's continue supporting our rangers. More often than not, they put their lives at risk, protecting the wildlife that we so much love, putting smiles on our faces. They inspire us like my father inspired us. They inspire communities and they make us feel comfortable knowing that our wildlife is protected day and night. Indeed, rangers deserve more of our support, honor and empowerment. One of the activities that we do to mitigate the threats to pandemic dogs is research and monitor. Our teams are out there day in and day out tracking and identifying where the dogs are so that they can see if, there's a, if there is any injured dogs or any missing dogs. And this allows us to have timeless interventions. Since March, we've disnayed a couple of dogs already because of the peak in poaching that has happened uh, during the pandemic. We feed the dogs with VHF collars, sometimes with GPS collars. And these VHF collars have got protective bracelets and they have a reflective orange color, which helps them when on the, they are on the road. And the bracelet helps them when they are caught in snakes. This has helped many dogs before. This is the case with Mpindo, which ventured out into communities outside of the protected area. It turned out there, but of course the community called us which was a positive, something that we have been calling for from the communities. We went in June 2018 and removed the dogs and put them in our rehab facility. Six months later, we released them and the dogs found themselves back again in Mpindo. But the community did not lose heart. They called us again and in 2019, we brought the dogs back again into our rehab facility. In September, we flew the dogs from Wange National Park all the way to Manapus, about 420 kilometers from Wange. Obviously hoping that the dogs won't make a trek back to Mpindo again. We released them into a boma at Chikwenya and they've been there ever since. To tell us more about the release recently in September of Mpindo Park and the way forward will be Peter Blinstone our executive director. Hi, I'm Peter Blinston. I'm the director of Painted Dog Conservation. So the day has finally arrived. We're in minor pools. Uh, today, after a year in the BOMA, we'll be releasing the Impindo pack. 
back into the wilds where they belong. I'd like to again thank Wilderness Safaris and Zim Parks for the tremendous support they've given us over the past year. And we've done everything we can to ensure the success of this uh, quite unusual translocation, moving the Impindo from the eastern boundaries of Wangi National Park all the way up here into Mana Pools and hopefully they'll make this their new home. So we're just going to go now and open the gate and uh, we'll see what happens, see what the next chapter will be in their eventful life. Pups are so nervous about coming out. So the translocation of the Mpindo Peck was made possible because of the rehabilitation facility that we have. This structure was constructed and finished in 2002 and has managed to hold over 70 dogs. It's designed to hold the sick and the injured and even whole packs. These positive interventions that we do are critical. The story of Vosile is one. Where Vosile Cecilia came to the rehab facility, she was sickly, we opened the gates, she walked in, we fed her, we nourished her, and later we released her together with other dogs that we had at the rehab. We can track since then 137 dogs, from Vosilia having pups and Vosilia's pups having pups, and those pups having pups of, of their own. It is that kind of positive intervention that we are proud to do at any given time so that we can protect the dogs from extinction. However, the rear facility has seen its days. It's now getting old and, and I'll introduce you to Tanaka and uh, Doubt who are going to show us some of the developments that have happened at the rear facility. Hi, my name is Tao Tinkomo. I am the maintenance manager for Painted Dog Conservation. I am happy to present uh, to you the new rehabilitation facility building, uh, which we've managed to complete despite all the hardships associated with uh, COVID-19. This building is going to house uh, the staff housing, uh, the lab, and also the freezer room. It will also have uh, power 24 hours a day from solar, uh, we completed this building with the help of uh, the community as well. We hired our local volunteer anti-poaching unit. With me here is Tanaka. She works at the rehabilitation facility. She is going to tell us more about how the building is going to help in their day-to-day -day running of the facility. We are very happy with the new building. It's going to take us a long way and assist us in carrying out different daily activities. We're going to be able to do scat analysis, attend any dog emergencies, and then the housing quarters are going to assist us also in making sure the dogs are okay and manning them 24-7. Thank you very much for your support. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the things that when we look ourselves in the mirror, give us satisfaction. I want you to look yourself in the mirror and give yourself a pet at the back and a big thumbs up for supporting conservation, for supporting wildlife. I'll read a note from one of you that I got in my inbox. I'll read the first one from you. He says, never was the attribute of resilience more important to us as individuals, as well as leaders, as it has become in the pandemic. And nor is it more valuable than in Zimbabwe. I'll read the second one from Judy. Although I'm perfectly happy in my own home, I just realized this morning how much I miss you all. 
in my live visit to PDC. This is what gives us the energy. This is what gets up us going and truly knowing that you have our, our backs. And please don't stop supporting us. Don't stop supporting wildlife. Don't stop supporting conservation. I thank you.